As a lifelong iPhone user who has every single iPhone in existence and has never purchased a Samsung device or any other modern Android device, Purchasing the Samsung Galaxy S8 was a mixed bag of emotions. What's up guys, my name is Brandon and here is my mini review slash first impressions after 72 hours straight of using the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus as my daily driver. So let's start with the looks. Not that much even needs to be said about the looks at this point, but the Galaxy S8 has just an incredible look. The display spans over the full entire front panel and curves over the edges. That's what Samsung is calling the infinity display and you can't really get a proper impression of this Quad HD Plus AMOLED display until you actually see it in person and hold it in your hand. Watching movies and videos is just amazing on the S8 and I actually enjoy it more than I do on my 7 Plus. I find myself reaching for the S8 every time I want to watch a video or a movie on Netflix or something like that. I reach for the S8 instead of the iPhone now which is crazy because you know you'd think it'd be instinct to just grab the iPhone but I actually grab the S8 just because the picture is that much better. However, one thing that I do absolutely hate about Android's version of the YouTube app is that when you open a link inside of YouTube, like in a YouTube description, the video will actually pause and not continue playing like it does on iOS. So when you go to a description, click a link, the video on Android just pauses, whereas on iOS, it continues playing in the background, which is very, very annoying, but you know, it's something I guess I'll have to get over. So things like that are what I found to be pretty common on Android. The apps just aren't as polished and as great as they are on iOS. Speaking of the screen, I'm definitely glad I got a case and a screen protector on day one because this thing is just a massive fingerprint magnet. And of course, who wouldn't be worried about scratching a thousand dollar screen that looks as beautiful as the S8 screen? And yes, Gorilla Glass 5 is known for scratching, so I'm not taking any chances at all. So when you unbox the S8, you're going to notice that it comes with black accessories, which I didn't actually realize how much I love black accessories until I started using them. So once I plug my device into the AC charger, I realized how awesome matching color accessories are it just has a really stealthy sleek look and everything just flows together and i've never had a problem with apple's white accessories until i got the iphone 7 plus in matte black all of a sudden i had that matte black color and i was like i want matching accessories to go with it especially the airpods speaking of the accessories and charging quick charge technology is amazing on the s8 i find it really useful when i want to head out you know in 10 15 minutes i need to leave in 10 15 minutes but i need to get some sort of charge in my device i found that quick charge definitely thrives in that situation and I definitely get a lot better charge, a lot quicker charge than I do with an iPhone. So I definitely hope that Apple puts some kind of quick charge technology in the next iPhone. So it's a little bit early to give a verdict on the battery life, but I must say the S8's battery life has been tremendous so far. I definitely noticed that it does last longer than the iPhone 7 Plus, but of course this could just be because the S8 is still so new and I don't have everything that I have on it like I do on the iPhone. I'll make sure to give an update on this and give more details on the battery life in the full review. As for my daily routine and just opening up applications, going into my social media apps, responding to comments, and things like that going in and out of all these social apps i did find that android in general was just slower than ios especially when it came to you know like i showed in the speed test when it came to the animations and when it came to reopening applications that i already had running in the background if you want to see more of what i'm talking about check the speed test i did comparing the s8 to the 7 plus in the cards or in the description so one of the very first things i did with my s8 which i showed in my first 13 things to do after unboxing your s8 video is customize the home screen and i love the freedom you have on stock android moving app icons to any slot you want on the home screen and moving and resizing widgets is something that is not possible on stock iOS. I also love how you can theme the device like you can with a jailbroken iPhone, although I will say that I found the iOS themes are just miles better than the ones I've seen on the theme store on Android. Another small thing I noticed is possible on Android is the ability to move multiple icons at once, which is something that is only possible on iOS with a jailbreak. And for someone like myself who moves icons around all the time, this is an epic little feature that Android users probably take for granted. The keyboard is another thing I'm still trying to get used to, and I actually like the Android keyboard, mainly because of that top row of numbers but it definitely does take some time to get used to and of course where do you use the keyboard most often while texting and life without iMessage is definitely rough and switching to the S8 makes me really realize how amazing iMessage is now I know there's other applications and things out there that you can get for Android like better you know messaging applications and things like that but it's just not even close to matching iMessage. So as far as the feel goes, the S8 Plus feels great in the hand, but I can't say that I prefer it over the 7 Plus 
because they just both feel great. They're both like a different kind of feel, but they both feel fine in the hand. The S8 does have a unique aspect ratio of 18.5 by nine, instead of the standard 16 by nine we're used to, which obviously does come with its flaws. I mean, you're gonna notice black bars and just unused space when watching videos and playing games on the S8. And this is mainly because most of the applications and even stock applications just aren't optimized for that aspect ratio just yet. This aspect ratio just makes the phone feel, I guess, skinny, which is the first word that comes to mind. And it actually makes the S8 great for one-handed use when going horizontal, since it is skinny. But trying to go full vertical with one hand isn't easy, and it's definitely harder than it is on the 7 Plus. And I really don't like this because I do use my S8 with one hand every single night before I go to bed and also when I wake up in the morning. One thing I really dislike about the S8, or just Android in general, is when I enter my passcode on the lock screen, I have to press okay. I wish the phone would just unlock after you enter the correct passcode like you do on iOS. It's just a small thing, but it really bugs me that I have to press another button every time I want to unlock my device via the passcode. However, I do love the iris scanner. Now, it's not perfect, you know, and it is kind of awkward to have to hold your phone like up here sometimes in like way in awkward positions, but I love it. It's actually grown to be my preferred way of unlocking my device. And I definitely prefer it over the fingerprint scanner because as you can see, my finger just doesn't reach that fingerprint scanner very easily at all. So obviously it's been talked about a lot how it's not very good design, but for people with big hands, it may not be an issue, but left-handers, I have a weird feeling for left lefties. I don't know how that's gonna be for lefties. I feel like it'd be kind of a problem there, uh, the position of that fingerprint scanner, I'm not sure. But like I'm saying, the iris scanner is just my preferred way, mainly because the other ways just aren't great. I mean, facial recognition, you can bypass that with a picture. Fingerprint scanner is just a pain. Iris scanner just seems to be the way I go these days, at least so far within the first 72 hours. And just looking at the fingerprint scanner from doing that, I can see smudges all over my camera, which is just another reason why I do not use the fingerprint scanner because I always end up smudging up my camera. However, with all that being said, I have not unlocked my phone in public with the iris scanner because it's definitely awkward to put your phone up weird like this, you know, in the middle of a crowd and people are gonna look at you like, what are you doing, taking a selfie or something? So that may change my mind really quick the more I start doing that because I've only done it once and it felt really weird. You know, I don't really care what people think, but it just still feels weird. So I don't know. I have, have mixed opinions, I guess, on the iris scanner. And uh, sometimes I do just default to putting in the passcode as well if I'm in a certain situation like that. The end screen home button on the S8 feels very similar to the home button on the 7 Plus, And that's because obviously neither one of them have a real home button, like a mechanical home button. The 7s is also a, you know, software based button. So it was definitely not hard to get adjusted to that at all. So to the left of that home button is the multitasking button. And this is where perhaps my favorite feature of the S8 in Android Android lies. So if you double tap that button, it takes you right back to the last application you were in. This is extremely handy and much quicker than going to the multitasking pane and just selecting the last application you were in. Speaking of buttons, I do sometimes press the Bixby button here on the left hand side below the volume markers just because I'm used to that being the volume down key. So on iPhone, it's a little bit lower, the volume markers are a little bit lower. So that seems to be just, I guess, where my foot, my fingers gravitate to because I think that's the volume down button just because I'm so used to iPhone. So I do find that to be a little bit of a nuisance, but I will definitely get used to that and stop doing that soon enough. So one thing I made sure to test on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus is the call quality. And what I concluded after talking to a few people is that the call quality is actually a bit worse on the S8 than it is on the 7 Plus. It wasn't bad, by any means, but I heard that I was a bit louder and it was a little bit more distorted, I guess, than what it is on the iPhone 7 Plus. So it's clearly, you know, it's not bad. It's just a little bit lower quality, I guess, than the 7 Plus. That's what other people have told me when I called them. Also, when I was listening to them, like through the speaker, they did sound a little bit worse, a little bit lower quality than the iPhone as well. The camera on the S8 is great. And you know this if you watch my video already, but if not, if you want to see my full comparison between the 7 Plus and the S8 Plus, check the video in the cards right now or also in the description. If the S8 shot better than the 7 Plus at low light, it'd be my go-to camera for phone photography. But unfortunately, I still prefer the image that the iPhone 7 produces in low light. But like I said, both cameras are amazing and I would definitely not buy one over the other just due to the minimal difference in the photo and video quality. Another small thing I love about the S8 and Android is the ability to change the camera settings without leaving the camera app. Unlike iOS where you have to go out and then into the settings and then back into the camera app. 
application. And lastly, I love the always on display and it does not drain battery at all, which was my main concern when I saw and heard about this feature on Android and the S8. I'll go to sleep with 100% battery and then wake up with 99%, even though my screen was on the entire time, which is just awesome. I didn't even realize how convenient it is to just be able to glance down at your phone in the morning or at night to see what time it is without having to reach down there and press a button to see the time. So I did not realize how convenient that was until I actually had this device in hand and saw this feature working. So overall, I am definitely satisfied with the Samsung Galaxy S8 8 plus it's a little bit early to call it like the best phone to ever exist but i will say it does make a strong case for being the best looking phone to ever exist i love the amount of features and the freedom that android comes with out of the box but it's the small things it's really just a combination of the small things that i love and respect the most about android and the s8 now some of you are probably thinking are you going to switch to android now you know are you leaving ios for android and the answer is probably not actually let me clarify no i am not and that's because i built this channel for a decade around ios and i can't just leave ios for good like that however if i did not run this channel here on youtube i would have a very interesting decision to make because it is a very close race i will definitely say that now of course i'm going to have a lot more to talk about and give a final verdict and the full review but this is just my general first impressions after 72 hours coming from a lifelong iphone user who has never owned a modern android device so thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe for a lot more s8 coverage you know i'll have the full review coming up as well as some more comparisons so thanks again for watching guys and i'll see you soon